In March 2022, 44 founders of unicorns, private companies valued at over $1 billion, were worth a total of $190 billion according to Forbes estimates. A year later, Forbes has revalued the world's billionaire-backed unicorns. The results are stark. Half of the wealth of the billionaires behind unicorns has been wiped out, leaving this elite group $96 billion poorer than they were a year ago. Forbes wealth reporter Matt DeRoe has more. So in the past, we valued the stakes of billionaire founders and co-founders of unicorns based on the valuations at which their unicorns last raised funding, really regardless of when that had happened. And in some cases, you know, that could have been a year or two years or even three years ago. We typically apply a 10% private company discount due to lack of liquidity, as well as, you know, um, you know, they're just being less detail on the company's financials than there is with public companies. And in the good times where valuations were really going in one direction, which was up, that seemed like the worst possible outcome of that would have been that we were overly conservative, which is not the worst place to be. But with public, you know, tech stocks and stocks in general having tanked from their peak and some of these companies having indicators of markdowns in their valuations, whether it be the rare down round or the eternal markdowns, um, you know, that approach didn't seem to make very much sense given this unique uh, point in time. So this time around, we worked with three data providers who mark these unicorns valuations to market, sort of like you would see for a public company on Yahoo Finance. And they do that using a number of things, but primarily uh, the performance of comparable public companies, a secondary market activity. So trading of these unicorns shares in the private markets and then where available uh, reporting by mutual funds who hold shares in these unicorns. And we you know, took the input of that and uh, ran our updated valuations by uh, venture capitalists, investors, and others knowledgeable of the space, as well as the specific companies. You know, I think we feel like we ended up in a pretty good spot that is reflective of the market and certainly a lot more precise than going off of the company's uh, prior funding rounds. The four unicorns that lost the most value over the last year were unique among the 30 or so unicorns that we looked at. The one that lost the most, Klarna, was the only one of the group that actually raised a new round of funding at a lower valuation. Around the middle of last year, they raised a new funding round in the $6 billion range, which is way down from a 45-ish billion dollar valuation less than a year earlier. And then the other three were ones, three of four, uh, in our group of 30 that marked down their internal valuations. So that was Stripe, Instacart, and Checkout.com. And each of them marked their internal valuations to a level that was roughly $26 billion to $30 billion lower than external investors valued them at in their last funding rounds. So other than FTX co-founders, Sam Bingman fried and Gary Wang, who saw their combined fortune of around $30 billion go to zero when FTX blew up, the two biggest losers were Guillaume Passat of uh, Checkout.com, who saw his fortune fall by $16 billion, or nearly 69%, followed by Victor Jakobsen of Klarna, who saw his fortune fall by nearly 80%. So over the last year, venture funding and new funding rounds for these unicorns has really dried up. I think in general, there's a view that, you know, funding activities got to pick up at some point and likely later in the year as some of these companies start to run out of cash from their last funding rounds and, you know, need to go back out to market. But in the meantime, you know, a big way to cut costs is through layoffs. And we've been seeing that across the industry. And then there's, just, you know, a general, uh, sense of optimism as well in the sense that, you know, if there's just a change in the outlook, viewing these valuations of the last year or two as historical outliers that, you know, things can resume with, you know, valuations that are more in line with historical standards and that the companies can also sort of refocus on operational efficiency, which in Likely, you know, a lot of places probably sort of went by the wayside when money was flowing and, you know, things were good.